flat six left in and flat right over crest slowing for line. This man talking non-stop is what's known as a rally team's co-driver. He never touches the wheel, never touches a pedal, but he's just as important as the driver. And all those words he's saying, they're directions. And one slip of the tongue and disaster could await. Rallying is hands down one of the most dangerous motorsports around. Drivers race down narrow public roads, covered in everything from dirt and gravel to snow and ice, at speeds of up to 100 miles per hour. Instead of drivers racing all at once, they go one by one around sharp blind corners and fly hundreds of feet off of sudden jumps. Just like airplane pilots have their co-pilots, Rally drivers have a co-driver sitting right next to them during each race. The co-driver's main job is to read out loud a series of pre-written directions called pace notes that the driver uses to navigate each stage. It's these notes that allow the driver to continue at full speed without hesitating at the course's most dangerous sections in order to get the best possible time. One of the co-driver's most important jobs starts days before the race has even begun, during an activity known as recce. During recce is um, when the driver and co-driver will take a car out, and that is when they go onto the stage roads and write the notes that they will be using when they're racing. So this is done at low speeds, 35 miles an hour is usually tops. The mental strain that it takes to 100% just focus on the road in front of you for sometimes 45 minutes to an hour of just paying attention to every deviation in the road and not missing anything. But while recce may seem time consuming and mind numbing, mistakes made or obstacles missed during it can lead to some of the biggest disasters. Nicholas Gilsoul, co-driver to one of the world's best rally drivers, Thierry Neuville, explained just how important recce is to a team's success and safety. We had last year a big accident with Thierry, uh, but it was not due to misunderstanding. It was due to the fact that during the recce, uh, we did it in the fog and the visibility was really bad. We were driving quite slow, uh, even slower than usually. and. Um, we underestimate the angle of a turn. Co-drivers have all kinds of strategies they use when writing pace notes, and they'll have them written to read either horizontally or vertically. Krista gave us a look at how she does hers, with an example she took with driver Sam Albert during their recce before Olympus Rally. So, series of notes here uh, always end in a distance so you have time to circle back around and get your next note um, so this is four plus plus left 80 hug five right 80 five plus left into five plus right tightens four plus plus 60. while that series of numbers and symbols may sound like gibberish it's actually fairly simple the numbers one through six refer to the severity of an upcoming turn, one being the sharpest and six being the most gradual. The pluses and minuses are used as modifiers for the turns that don't quite fit into being labeled just a full one or six. Simple miscommunication with these notes though can have some of the worst consequences, like at 2018's Tour de Course, when co-driver Paul Nagel called out a wrong pace note to his driver, Chris Meek sending the pair flying off the track. Five left. Oh, three left. Five left. By calling out five left, Nagel instructed Meek to keep the car in fifth gear for a gradual left turn, but ended up sending the pair 30 miles per hour into what ended up being a tight corner. But co-drivers need to be able to do more than simply read and write directions. A co-driver and driver need to be able to handle breakdowns and mechanical issues with the car by themselves with a limited supply of tools. A famous example occurred in 2002's Acropolis Rally when co-driver Phil Mills had to repair his driver Petter Solberg's loose steering wheel while they continued driving. We, we have to sort out mechanical issue or damage on the car and we have only a few, few tools on board so 
sometimes we have to become suddenly MacGyver. For example, in 2014, I remember really well in Ali, Mexico, we had a leak at the cooling of the engine system. We had to refill the, the tank, not with water, because we, we didn't have with us, but we got a big bottle of Corona beer and we were able to use the liquid coming from the beer bottle and uh, we were able to solve the situation. And then there are situations you just can't predict. At 2018's Rally Mexico, locals had set a trap for drivers by closing a large metal cattle gate, forcing co-driver Anders Jaeger to get out of the car and open it himself. As expected, blindly following your co-driver's directions requires an intense level of trust between the two teammates. This method of driving leaves little to no room for error from either person. Something which is really a key and you need to understand in our sport, it's uh, we are working like what I call a mirror confidence. Thierry needs to trust me about what I'm telling him while we are driving through the stage in the same way, but in opposite. I need to trust him to be 100% confident about how he's driving, how he's approaching uh, each turn through a stages. So while a rally team's success obviously depends on the talent and skills of its driver, just as much pressure sits on the shoulders of its co-driver. It's because of co-drivers that the team's wheelman can focus on just one thing, driving. A co-driver at the top of their game can be the difference between a disastrous ending and standing at the top of the podium. <laughs>